Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, a UN human rights probe in Ethiopia will soon wrap up after no international attempt was made to extend it. Investigators had called for more digging to be done after warnings of an overwhelming risk of further abuse in the aftermath of a devastating conflict. Also, increasing numbers of Senegalese migrants are heading to Central America in the hopes of eventually making it to the US. But the journey in pursuit of the American dream is expensive and uncertain. Also, a young Ghanaian theologian has gone to extraordinary lengths to find just the right school to deepen his understanding of his faith. He cycled thousands of kilometers to get the wheels turning in his bid to study Islamic theology. But first, the U.S. has said that it will restart food aid deliveries to hundreds of thousands of refugees in Ethiopia. Assistance was paused four months ago over concerns about systemic theft of supplies. Ethiopia's government since agreed to step back from involvement in the storage and distri distribution of food aid. Now, U.S. aid has also brought in biometric testing and GPS tracking of its operations. Many of the communities desperate for help in Ethiopia are those affected by the recent war in the region of Tigray. A UN human rights probe into the aftermath of that conflict is controversially due to end next week. This despite warnings that abuses are still happening. Clotilde Azar talks us through. Despite investigators' concern that war crimes continue to be committed in Ethiopia, no motion has been submitted to extend the mandates of the Independent International Commission of Human Rights Experts on Ethiopia. And so the deadline to do so expired on Wednesday. Uh, the UN probe was the last major independent investigation into the two-year conflict between Ethiopia's federal troops and fighters from the northern region of Tigray that formally ended last November. Hundreds of thousands of people were killed and both sides were accused of massacres, mass rape and torture. Uh, the European Union submitted a motion to the UN to create the Commission in December 2021. Its latest report was issued earlier this week and warned that all of the common risk factors for atrocity crimes are present in Ethiopia. Uh, the experts also highlighted the important prevention role played by the Human Rights Council. They want ongoing international scrutiny and independent investigations into past and ongoing violations. They've also said that there is a real imminent risk that the situation will deteriorate further in Ethiopia. Addis Abeba has always opposed the Commission. Its experts were not allowed to stay in the country and were forced to, to work remotely from an office in Uganda. Human Rights Watch was slammed the failure to continue the inquiry. The rights group has said that its closure will be a devastating blow to victims and will undercut EU credibility as a proponent for justice around the world. Clotilde Azar there for us. Now, France has said that it will start withdrawing troops from Niger this week. The move comes after weeks of tensions between Paris and the Nigerian junta that ousted President Mohamed Bazoum back in July. About 1,000 French soldiers and airmen are based at a site in Niamey, and another 400 are deployed alongside local troops near the borders with Burkina Faso and Mali. Niger's military rulers claim that soldiers based at Ulam in the northwest will be the first to leave, with the airbase in Niamey due to be dismantled by the end of the year. Opposition candidates in Egypt's presidential elections in December are already complaining about an uneven playing field. While current President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi is widely expected to win, there is one particularly robust challenger, former politician Ahmed el-Tantawi. Now, his campaign claim that people trying to endorse him have already faced bureaucratic obstacles and even harassment. Edouard Cousin with more. Aside Sisi, seven politicians have so far announced their intention to run. Ahmed al Tantawi has managed to attract most attention. He has an active social media presence and tours the country speaking with citizens about their concerns and to mobilize support. He often shows videos of him surrounded by people shunting his name. Even his crowds are small, tens of people at most. Scenes like this have long been unimaginable under the repressive rule of President Sisi. However, Tantawi says his campaign does face a lot of pressures from the authorities. 82 of my colleagues from the electoral campaign have been imprisoned for common and repeated accusations over the last 10 years. 
At this moment, Egyptian citizens are standing in front of the civil registry offices, some of them trying for the eighth day in a row to issue an endorsement for someone to run for the presidential elections, and they have been unable to obtain this right so far. Pressures or not, the Tawi said he is determined and capable of achieving democratic transition. A coalition of opposition parties, the so-called civil democratic movement, said in a press conference that they may boycott these elections if opposition candidates were not able to run. They said, for instance, that if Tantawi was excluded from the race, this could never be free and fair elections and they would be a mere theater. Potential candidates have until the 14th of October to collect the necessary 25,000 endorsements of registered voters to be able to participate in the elections. Ugandan opposition leader Bobby Wine said that he is under house arrest. The pop star turned politician has been detained several times in the past. He lost out to longtime President Yauri Museveni when he ran in the 2021 elections and has long complained of being politically persecuted. Wine, whose real name is Robert Kiagunani, says that he was seized by security forces when returning from a trip abroad this week. Police, though, deny that Wine's been arrested and claim to have escorted the 41-year-old home from the airport. Meanwhile, the U.S. says that it is concerned that democratic space may be shrinking in Uganda. Meanwhile, friends of a well-known Gambian comedian and government critic say that they're worried about his safety after he was taken into custody earlier this week and they've since heard nothing from him. Alagi Bora was granted bail two months ago after having originally been arrested for having criticised the government of President Adama Barrow. He then dropped off the radar after meeting with police again on Tuesday. His agent, Alina, tells me more about why she is quite so concerned. So Bora was um, initially arrested a couple of months ago after he made comments um, in his TV show about African leaders being the cause of military coups of bad leadership. The uh, police arrested him for those comments, detained him for 72 hours and then released him on bail without charge. And then last Tuesday, the police invited him again for questioning and arrested him immediately he got to the station. Um, he has been detained since then without being charged or having access to family or lawyer. Um, the latest arrest came a few hours after the president, uh, Mr. Barrow, said in a political rally that he'd asked the police to revoke bails of um, critics and jail them. Uh, prior to that, Alajibora was granted bail two months ago um, when he spoke out against the authorities on the uh, numerous corruption scandals and other mismanagement going on in the country. So presently, we do not know where he is. Nobody knows. Nima Diata there speaking to me a little earlier on. Now, increasing numbers of Senegalese migrants are heading to the Central American country of Nicaragua in the hopes of eventually making it through to the States. Those arriving by plane often don't have a visa. They then travel by road to Mexico and hope to continue the journey north from there. This journey in pursuit of the American dream is expensive and uncertain. Our team report. 22-year-old Keba remembers when he reached this wall, the last obstacle before making it into the United States. His American dream was eventually shattered when he was deported back to Senegal from a detention centre in Texas last month. These are really bad memories. I really wanted to complete my journey. Keba first flew into Nicaragua before passing through multiple Central American countries to reach the US border. The journey cost him more than 12,000 euros. The journey is dangerous. The smugglers don't have fixed prices. There's no security. And you can find yourself in countries where you're vulnerable. You can be shot at with impunity. You constantly have to flee immigration services who can arrest and deport you at any moment. Nicaragua doesn't require a visa for Senegalese migrants arriving by plane. Those with the resources are turning away from the deadly migration route by boat to the Canary Islands. While migration to Central America isn't a new phenomenon, it's certainly becoming more popular. 
Researchers attribute this to the economic crisis, as well as the emergence of a new profile of migrant in Senegal. These are people that have economic capital and who also have professional experience that cannot be fully exploited in their country of origin. Now, considering the inflation here, people feel forced to leave. We shouldn't forget that these people feel abandoned, so there is a feeling of frustration. According to a recent report from the IOM, nearly 20,000 Africans crossed the border from Nicaragua into Honduras during the first half of 2023, an increase of more than 500 percent compared to the same period last year. And finally, a young Ghanaian theologian has gone to extraordinary lengths to find just the right school to deepen his understanding of his faith. Mamadou Safawi has cycled thousands of kilometres. Take a look. If there's one thing that Mamadou Safawi Barry knows very well, is that determination pays off. The 25-year-old Guinean student's big dream was to become a scholar, but it meant travelling to Egypt from his native Guinea. Unaffordable for Mamadou. And yet, that did not deter him. He drew a map of Africa in his spiral notebook and set off on a second-hand mountain bike, carrying only a change of clothes, a flashlight and a screwdriver. On May 18th, I had already left. I was on the Guinea-Mali border. I only had 35,000 African francs in my pocket. That's all I had for travel. But before I left Guinea, I had mangoes and bread with me. Covering around 100 kilometers each day, Barry pedaled through Mali, Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin and Niger. He was arrested three times along the way. Barry's luck changed in Chad after a local philanthropist who read about Barry's journey online offered him to fly him directly to Egypt and bypass the ongoing conflict in Sudan. Barry arrived in Cairo on September 5th and secured a full scholarship to Al-Azhar University days later. He intends to return to Guinea once his studies are complete but he's already sharing this advice. If you have a dream, all things you have to do, you have to follow this dream. To say that today I'm doing this, tomorrow this, no. You will never see a good road. But if you have dream, rest on it and be strong on it. Wowzers, and I can barely plan a weekend trip. Well done there. Well, that's it, though, all we have time for for Eye on Africa. Thanks for joining us, though. Do so again. Take care.